Hey everybody, I'm going to be going over the multipliers practice question that I sent to you guys over Remind. It looks something like this. So hopefully you've already solved these questions. We're just going to go over the answers and how I figured it out. So the first question says investment spending falls by 20 million. If the MPC is 0.8, what would the change in output be? So I know it looks like there's some sort of change in spending and it's asking about output. So I must be referring to this problem right here. Change of spending, that's an equation. Change of spending times KS equals some sort of change in GDP. Um, I know that because there's been some sort of change in spending, it's giving me MPC and it's asking for output. So it's gotta be one of these multiplier problems with the spending. So I fill out what I know. I know that the spending in uh, investment spending increased, or actually I think it decreased. And yeah, it says false. So let me change that. It decreased by $20 million. Um, I don't know KS directly and I'm solving for GDP. I don't know KS directly, but I know the KS formula is one over MPS. And MPS is actually not given to us in the problem MPC is. It says MPC is 0.8 in the problem. Well, I know that MPC plus MPS is equal to one if they add them together. So if MPC is 0.8, MPS has got to be 0.2. So one over 0.2 gives you five. And you can think of that in lots of different ways. Maybe it is moving a decimal place over, making that a 10 and a two. We have approximately one minute to get to class, one minute. Which is five. Or you can do fractions within fractions and like cross things out. I don't really know how this works. Uh, and then it's equal to five, but either way, you just solved for KS, for the spending multiplier, and KS is five. So I can plug that into my problem. Now it's 20 million decreasing because it was a fall of 20 million times five. GDP is going to decrease by 100 million because it had change of investment spending times the spending multiplier. It gives us a change in real GDP, and that is GDP will decrease by 100 million. That's the first question. The second question says, if you have an increase of income of $2,000, and because of that you save $8,000 more than you usually do, what is your MPC? So this isn't a big change. It's not talking about GDP. It's not talking about like a change of C or I or G or XN. It's literally just asking what is the MPC. So you're solving for MPC. So here's what you know. You know your income changed by $2,000. Savings changed by $800. Okay, so the marginal propensity to save formula is change of savings over change of income. Both of those were given to you in the problem. The change of savings was 800, the change of income was 2000, and so the 800 goes in the uh, numerator, the 2000 goes in the denominator. You're just simplifying and you get four fifths, which in decimal form is 0.8. But remember, that was solving for MPS because we were using savings over income, not consumption over income. So we weren't solving for MPC, we were solving for MPS. Unfortunately, the question then says, like, what is the marginal propensity to consume, not save? So you need to make sure that you're answering the right question. If you set up your formulas, you know what you're solving for so you don't get confused. And since we know we solved for MPS, and I know that MPS plus MPC is equal to one, I know that MPS is eight, so MPC must be 0.2. All right. The next question, question three, says GDP increased by $180 billion due to a decrease in taxes. If the MPS is 0.1, what is the change in taxes? So in this problem, we're using the tax multiplier. The tax multiplier is different than the spending multiplier, so you have to make sure you're using the right multipliers. So it's change of taxes times KT gives you some sort of change in real GDP. So you plug in what you know from the problem. It gives you the change in real GDP because it says GDP increased by 180 billion. So that goes right here. GDP increases, that's why there's a plus there by 180 billion. I'm solving for taxes. 
I don't have KT specifically, but I can figure out KT with an MPC or MPS, whatever was given. Remember, here's the formula for KT, for the tax multiplier, negative MPC over MPS. MPS was given to you in the problem. It was 0.1. And I know that MPC plus MPS is equal to 1, so if the denominator here is 0.1, the numerator's got to be 0.9. And we're making it negative, because that's the formula, negative MPC over MPS. Negative 0.9 over 0.1 is negative 9. So that is KT. That's what we just solved for, KT. Sometimes during your workout, you don't get lost, because you always know what you're solving for. You're solving for KT. So I'm going to plug that in. Change of taxes times now, we have the negative 9 as our tax multiplier is equal to 180 billion. So then you're just solving for taxes. So what times negative 9 is 180 billion? So what I did is I divided by 9 on both sides, and then I got taxes is equal to 180 billion divided by negative 9, which is negative 20 billion. So the change of taxes that caused GDP to go up by 180 billion, they must have cut taxes by 20 billion because the multiplier was negative nine. On the uh, solving for KS and KT, this is just practice. Um, hopefully you can do this without a calculator of the questions that you're gonna see most often are going to be using these MPCs and MPSs. And I, tr I was trying to see if you were paying attention by mixing up, like some of these are MPCs, but some of these are MPSs. So did you notice that they were different? So here is my little, um, little chart. Um, we have what I was given to me, MPC 0.9, MPS 0.25, MPC 0.8, MPS 0.5. And then I just had to figure out what the other side of that was. So if MPC is 0.9, MPS is 0.1, if MPS is 0.25, MPC is 0.75. If MPC is 0.8, MPS is 0.2. And this one's easy. If MPS is 0.5, then MPC is 0.5. Because remember, these two numbers added together equal 1. So 0.9 plus 0.1 is 1. 0.25 plus 0.75 is 1. 0 0.8, 0 0.2 is equal to 1. And 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 is also equal to 1. And here is the formulas. For the spending multiplier, it's 1 over MPS. So I just put a whole bunch of MPSs on the denominator, making sure I was grabbing the right MPSs, and then um, solving for 1 over MPS. For the tax multiplier, the equation is different. It's negative MPC over MPS. So you actually need both of these numbers um, because they're both going to be in the equation. Multi um, notice how MPS is on the denominator for both KS and KT. So MPS is always going to be on the denominator. Sometimes it's one on the numerator, if you're talking about KS, and sometimes it's negative MPC, if you're talking about KT. But notice the relationship between KS and KT. 10, negative nine. Four, negative three. Five, negative four. And two, negative one. The KT is always one less and negative compared to KS. Remember, KS is always greater than KT. That's why the spending has a bigger effect on GDP than taxes do, because KS is always one larger and positive. KT is one less and negative. And the last question was, if I can scroll, it says, what is the MPS if GDP increased by 500 billion because of government spending increases by 100 billion. It's still going to be the equation of spending times the spending multiplier gives us GDP, right here, because it, they talk about change of spending, they talk about a change in GDP. Um, this time though, they gave us the two ends. They gave us the change of spending, 100 billion, and they told us the change of GDP, which was 500 billion. So we know that something, something times 100 billion gives us a change of 500 billion. So KS must be equal to five. But what are we solving for? We're not solving for a KS. We're solving for the marginal propensity to save. We're solving for MPS. So if I know that KS is equal to five and I know the equation for KS, KS is one over MPS, I know that five 
in this problem is equal to 1 over MPS. And I can just solve for MPS. I can divide both sides by MPS, or sorry, multiply both sides by MPS, so that cancels out, and MPS is also over here. And MPS times 5 is equal to 1, and then I divide both sides by 5. Eventually, I'm going to get MPS is equal to 1 fifth, which is 0.2, and that's what I'm solving for. MPS is equal to 0.2. Remember, I could have also asked for MPC here, and if that was the case, MPC would be equal to 0.8 because adding them together is going to equal one. So hopefully this was a good review of skills, to different types of questions, whether it's spending or taxes, which multiplier I'm using. Is this just solving for MPC and MPS? Am I talking about income changes? Or is this going to be where I'm given taxes and GDP or spending and GDP and I have to kind of work backwards to kind of solve for maybe the multiplier or maybe the parts of the multiplier like MPC and MPS. But these are just different questions that cover those basic skills and sometimes you just need practice. Uh, Khan Academy's got some good practice. Um, I can always make more of these little worksheet things and send them out to you. But either way, we have a quiz tomorrow and 10 questions, I think about five of them, are about MPC and MPS and, and the multiplier. So these questions aren't going away. We're going to need to practice them. But hopefully this helped you guys out. I will see you guys later. Have a great afternoon. Bye.